So thank you very much. It's good to be back here. Um, and I am going to go through the Internet Trends presentation. And um, having been critiqued a couple of years ago for doing a presentation the way one shouldn't do a presentation, talking too fast and going through some more content than people had a chance to look at, I'm going to do that yet again um, and <laughs> take all the criticism. And the reality is you are all very smart. And there are five glasses of water up here. And um, you, um, the slides are on the web. They're at kpcb.com. And John will tweet them and get them out there as well. So I will go through them very quickly, but you'll have them. So one thing has changed since I was last here, and that is I joined Kleiner Perkins. This is a logo slide of the investments Kleiner has made in the venture space and also the mid to late stage growth area for private companies, which is what I focus on. Uh, and I help run a billion dollar fund at Kleiner that focuses on mid to late stage digital investments. On the trends, here are the 12 trends in 12 minutes. Uh, the first is globality, mobile, what changes in user interface, commerce, advertising, content creation, technology and mobile leadership, why Americans should be very proud of all that's been created, a mega trend of the 21st century, authentic identity, though I'm not sure I'll do as good a job as Chris Poole did yesterday. I'll just lay out a bit of a framework. Uh, some economic trends, um, some thoughts on a report we put together called USA Inc and then some closing thoughts. And with that on globality, we are not in Kansas anymore. The data every year gets more and more pronounced. Apple, Google, Amazon.com, and Facebook remain the mega leaders, uh, but the Chinese and Russian companies continuing, continue to rank, crank up the leaderboard. Uh, this is a list of the top 25 global public internet companies ranked by market value. We put one in there that's not public uh, called Facebook, simply because the market cap uh, at an estimated above $70 billion, gave it enough girth to be worthy of being on, um, on, this, on this chart. And it certainly is one of the key platform players of the next five years or so. 81% of internet users on the top uh, 10 global internet properties in the world are outside the US, um, a striking stat. If, we, if you'd ask anybody in this room three years ago which countries would add the most internet users over the next three years. A lot of us would have said China. A lot of us would have said India. I don't think anyone would have said Nigeria. A few might have said Russia. Uh, and I don't think anyone would have said Iran. And I bring this up because one of the things that's important for us as investors and all of us as company builders is we really increasingly need to look at these other markets around the world and figure out what's going on and are there things that are apply to the markets that we primarily work in, or are there things that we should do to get into those markets? Um, we're all active social networkers in one way, shape, or form. As uh, We're going to use a lot of Comscore data, so Comscore, thank you very much. Um, I think many of you probably saw the stat that there are more, there are as many social networkers today as the people using social networks, excuse me, as there were using the entire internet in 2006. Seventy percent of those social networking users use Facebook. Um, I know we all think that the U.S. is pretty, a pretty active place for social networking, uh, but Peru, actually, people in Peru use social networking more on a monthly basis per hour per month than they do in the U.S., Mexico even more, Canada more, Colombia more, Venezuela, the Philippines, Russia, Chile, Turkey, Argentina, and Israel, uh, the number one market um, for social networking usage in the world. And there are a couple common themes here. One, these countries either tend to skew younger, um, have a younger demographic, and, and the younger people are very active, or the weather tends to be very cold. Um, one of the things that we've done, um, I, one of the things that's been interesting to look at over the, over the last five or 10 years is to look at companies that have gotten density in one market in the world and then watch them take that product from what we'll call a test market um, and then and take it to a much broader marketplace. Four companies that have been very successful at that are Shazam. Uh, they're all social services, started in the UK as a sound and music recognition site. Spotify, many of you probably know and use in Sweden, and then slowly but surely got outside that market and stayed in that market with quite, quite, quite a lot of success. Waze is a company that's doing that with uh, driving navigation, social-based driving navigation in Israel where it has critical mass and is now expanding that into different countries and into different cities, and then a company um, called SoundCloud as well. So a, a, an area, at least from an investment perspective, that wasn't that interesting 10 to 15 years ago that is now in large part because mobile 
and social allow these products to get spread around pretty quickly. The title of this slide is Breakthrough Communications Technologies and Services Can Break Out Even During Breakdown Times. Um, we are living through two of those today. This looks back at the last century and looks at adoption of the four, on this at the moment, two most popular um, new technology and services that were adopted by Americans. The blue, I think it's a blue line, represents AM radio. It got to, it got to mainstream super quickly, TV the same way. This is the internet and this is the mobile internet. The, the, the red line, and I can't go back, but maybe somebody will let me go back. Rep, thank you very much. Thank you. How are you up there? Um, the red bar represents a recession, and it's very unusual when you have a new business or technology or product or, that grows very quickly during tough economic times. And can we go back one slide, guys? I think you're going to get me through this quickly, whether I like it or not. Uh, and it happened with TV, and it's happening, it happened with the internet, it's obviously happening with mobile internet. So we are living through a very, very special time. What happened twice or once in a, in a generation over the course of the last century is happening twice to us in the same, in the same generation. So these are really unique times. Mobile, inter, mobile users growing very quickly. This is 3G data, 35% year-on-year growth around the world, almost a billion 3G subscribers. And that's only 17% of mobile subscribers. So we still have a huge amount of running room to go in this mobile internet market. This simply looks at smartphones and, and how they're shipping vis-a-vis -vis feature phones. Smartphones outship feature phones in the US in, um, in the, I think, the third qu fourth quarter of whatever year that is. But very recently, so that was, I think, the fourth quarter of 2010. Uh, happened in Western Europe earlier, and the rest of the world still has a long way to go. So still a very fertile, uh, fertile market ahead of us. This just looks at the same data in a different way, looks at smartphone subscribers today compared to mobile phone users in the rest of the world. So still a lot of upside ahead of us. Uh, this is a slide many of you have seen. I'm going to show it again just because I think it's amazing for somebody who gets excited about PowerPoint slides. That was, gosh, guys, you're moving ahead. iPods, green. Go, next one, orange, <laughs> iPhones. All, this is the first quarter since the ramp. OK, just go ahead without me, guys. Um, so the point of that was you thought the iPod ramped quickly, and you thought the iPhone ramped quickly. This is the iPad ramp in the first six quarters of launch relative to those other things. So if it seems like it's happening faster uh, than anything you've seen before, it really is. And this is the same thing looking at the iPhone ramp, which we just looked at, that looked like it was pretty fast. And this is Android phone shipments in the first 11 months, 11 quarters um, since, la since launch. So this is, it's a very, very unique time. When we think about smartphones, we often think about uh, iPhone. There are actually more Android phones out there than the iPhones. When we think about tablets, we often think just of the iPad. But it's notable that while there are 29 million cumulus shipments of iPads, there are 16 million cumulus shipments of the Amazon Kindle. So certainly a contender, obviously a different price point, which for a lot of people is, is very, very compelling. So not to be underestimated. Uh, this is just mobile usage data for three of the, of the more interesting apps out there. 60% of Pandora users are already accessing Pandora via mobile devices, 55% of Twitter users, 33% of Facebook. And this is all since basically zero in 2008. And this is just framing stuff you already know. Search growth growing very rapidly. That's Google data. Mobile advertising. This is a, a global um, mobile advertising company called InMobi. 250 um, for, of the Fortune 1000 advertisers are advertising with InMobi. And the, and the colors in the bars represent where they're advertising around the world. So this is not just a US thing or a Japan thing. It's happening all over the world and ramping very, very quickly. Uh, mobile app and advertising revenue is a $12 billion market in 2011, up 17 times in the past, the past three years. Uh, this is something we put together back in 2005. I think we did it for John at a conference, and we're moving forward. But um, I do want to move back on that one, guys. John, what are you doing to me? OK, we'll come back to that. I'll talk about it in the Q&A. Um, so this is about user interface and where we are today. And, and we're, move, we're obviously moved, we've got moved beyond the graphical stage, which we'll get to in a minute. But what is one insanely great designer, entertainer, leader, and businessman wrought? Before Steve Jobs, computers were utilitarian tools for computation. After Steve, computers became beautiful objects we could use in thousands of ways 
to aim to make life better. Steve's design aesthetic was second to none. Uh, we have all benefited. Uh, many of us in this room were around in the 1980s when we were bound by text interfaces. And one guy brought us graphical user interfaces and touch, sound, and move. Um, and sound is something I'm going to speak, uh, speak about here. Uh, but we think, and unfortunately, I'm glad you're taking my picture, but you're in between me and the slides, but that's OK. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's OK. We can do that later. Uh, the next big things, we think the next big things are the big things on the sides of your head. Um, and those would be your ears. Um, and when we look at the whole environment that we're living in right now, there are 4 billion Bluetooth-enabled devices. Headsets are getting better by the quarter. The noise cancellation technology, noise assassin, as Jawbone calls it, is really fabulous. The Jambox speakers and other speakers are wireless. They're portable. They're super high quality. Connected car audio is improving by the year. Sound recognition and, and understanding is getting better, whether it's Shazam, whether it's Siri. Uh, and then sound creation and sharing is also getting better by the, by the quarter, whether it's SoundCloud or Spotify. Uh, Alex Young, who's the founder and CEO of SoundCloud, was quoted as saying, sound is going to be bigger than video. Record is the new QWERTY. And Alex is waving at me, I think, from in the audience. So that was not Alex, but that's good to see you, too. Um, <laughs> um, you're, you're, you're the one clicking the slides. Um, commerce, fast, easy, fun savings are more important than ever. Um, we've had four quarters of accelerating growth. E-commerce continues to gain share from offline. It's at 8%. We think there's a lot of headroom to go. The trend is moving in the right direction. Mobile commerce has absolutely lifted off. This looks at eBay's trajectory of uh, gross payment volume for commerce on mobile devices. eBay, PayPal, Target, Amazon.com, and Square also ramping very quickly. Uh, one of the things that I'm most excited about, because I do like to shop, is how the magazine has changed in the last two to three years, in large part thanks to the tablet. I've called it, it's a bird, it's a plane. No, it's click and buy on a mobile device. I tend to go to One King's Lane about f for five minutes nearly every morning. And it, to me, it's a beautiful curated magazine where I can click and buy uh, whatever I see and like. And we're doing this um, pretty naturally now. I think it's important to take a step back and think about what that really means and what it means for commerce over the next five to 10 years. It's now the expectation when you see it on your screen that you can click and cause an action and even, even purchase something. This was a stunning stat, uh, thanks to Comscore, that looks at what were the reasons for in-store purchases purchase abandonment among US smartphone shoppers. Number one reason, they found it at a better price, found it online at a better price. People are in your store, they've got their mobile phone. I'm not gonna buy it here, I found it at a better price. I found it at a better price at another store. Found it online at another store. Those are the top reasons for purchase abandonment. Transparency and mobile are making a huge difference in commerce. One of the things about the mobile sites that are out there is that they're rejuvenating local commerce in a lot of communities, um, which is a big business all in. Advertising trends are looking good. You've seen this before. It looks at the percent of time spent in different forms of media and the amount of advertising dollars spent. It's way out of whack for both internet and mobile, a $20 billion opportunity in the US if the revenue equals the time, the time spent. Advertising dollars follow eyeballs. Uh, one of the data points that we look at most often it, to figure out what the health of the advertising market is is Google's click growth and cost per click growth. I certainly would have expected a big company like Google to support 28% click growth in the third quarter, but they did up from 18%. So again, more health in, in, uh, in the marketplace. Time spent on social networking sites surpassed portals in June of 2011, a big inflection point for our industry. Uh, when we showed this slide a year ago, this looks at CPMs for different forms of uh, uh, advertising units on the web. Social networking CPMs were way under indexed, and just in the last year to year and a half, they've begun to punch their weight from a pricing standpoint, which is part of the reason uh, that market is pretty healthy for a major player in that space. I'm going to skip over this content creation slide because Joanne Bradford from Demand Media is going to do a better job of talking about this than I am, and I'm running out of time. And I do want to focus on a couple things. I think we should all be, we're at a very a difficult time of a lot of economic uncertainty. We're pretty lucky in Silicon Valley. We have a lot of positive things going on. Uh, we're living through a once in every 10 to 20 years technology cycle. 
the mobile computing cycle, smartphones and tablets just outshipped PCs in the fourth quarter of last year. The Windows operating system fell to being installed on less than 10, 50% of internet enabled devices in early 2010. And in what looked like a market that the US was not gonna lead in, America is, is winning in a big way. Uh, smartphone operating systems are up to 64% share of global smartphones that are shipped around the world in 2011 up from 5% five years ago, and the trend is still moving in the right direction. And to the numbers I went through earlier, nearly a billion smartphone users in a six billion market, so a lot of upside, I think, for this whole, this whole category. Pace of innovation in Silicon Valley may be unprecedented. Uh, I've never seen the kind of intensity, focus, and leadership at companies like Apple, Google, Amazon.com that are all going for part of the same, the same business. Uh, and the combination of technology improvements and elegant design may be, may be unprecedented. A couple of megatrends, um, or a megatrend, I think when people look back at this era that we're living in now, in uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, they'll say that this is the time when people around the world got empowered via connected mobile devices. This is Twitter data that looks at the Japanese earthquake in March of 2011. These are the tweets to and from um, around the world, Japan, uh, in and out of Japan, over a 16-minute period when the tsunami hit. Um, the ability to get real-time, fast, and broad information flow is only going to get more dramatic. Uh, remote locations are getting connected. I was surprised by the stat that more people have cellular access or signals than are connected through the electrical grid. Uh, there are 200 million farmers in India that are receiving government payments and subsidies via their mobile devices, so able to connect in a way that they couldn't before. And this is something a lot of you probably haven't focused on, uh, but I think it's important, especially when we look at the geopolitics of what we're dealing with uh, right now with the debt loads in, in Europe and, and slowing economies around the world. The world is more connected than it's ever been. 24% of world trade is cross-geography up from 10% in the 1960s. So in many ways, at a meta level, when you think about the superpowers in the world, we're more codependent than ever. And while there are a lot of, um, a lot of forces in smaller places around the world, the codependence is actually good, I think, for, for all of us. And it's a part of the connectivity that we're certainly focusing on in, in, uh, in the internet with social networks, et cetera. Authentic identity, this will be one of the big topics of the next 10 years. Um, there's a good part, there's a bad part, there's an ugly part. Um, but I think in, in a world with tremendous uncertainty, owing to the rapid ramp and always on connected citizens of the world, perhaps the world is on the cusp of being safer than ever. Uh, this is a discussion that requires more than the remaining two minutes I don't have, but I just wanted to throw that out there and focus on some economic data points and then, and then wrap up. Um, every data point I'm gonna focus on highlights that people are very, there's a lot of uncertainty in the market. This is a measure of volatility called the VIX that investors look at that indicates uh, how volatile stocks are, um, the publicly traded companies. And it's at a very, very high level. Not a record high, but it's way higher um, than average right now. That illustrates a lot of uncertainty. Consumer confidence uh, is well below historical averages, also illustrating uncertainty. Um, U.S. corporate capital spending budgets fell in the third quarter, um, also illustrating uncertainty of CFOs and CEOs of major companies saying, you know what, I think we should probably spend a little less given the business outlook. GDP growth forecasts around the world have been uh, revised downward, uh, and growth rates are typically forecast to be lower in the next couple years than they were in 2010. Uh, the stock market, in my experience, is the smartest leading indicator of where the economy is going to go. And you can look at some patterns here beginning in, in 2010, trending up, then trending down, then trending up for a long period of time. We lived in a pretty good uh, 2010 sort of time frame. Things began to turn down at the beginning of the year, largely because of the European debt situation. We've had a good two weeks. So on that note, we can say we've had a good two weeks. So if this trend line continues, we're in good shape. And John may want to ask me about that later. But I think that that's something you should all watch pretty, pretty religiously. Last thing wrote a report called USA Inc. Uh, that looks at America's financial statements and where we are. I did it just because I was curious and I didn't understand it. I think I have a better understanding now of it now. The red line looks at our country's expenses as a percent of GDP. The green line looks at our, our, our country's revenue as a percent of GDP. We are at the largest gap between revenue and expenses 
uh, we've had during peacetime in the history of our country. Uh, and you all are tax taxpayers. Uh, and a lot of your taxes, you need to know where they're going. Uh, and you need to figure out whether you're happy that that's where they're going. You need to pay attention and need to have a voice on it, in my humble opinion. And on a sobering note, this looks at America's debt level relative to other countries. Uh, and I will let you do the math. But we are just behind Ireland, and we are just ahead of Portugal and Iceland. Uh, and I'll let you do the math. And with that, that's the report. That's where you can find it. And I have closing thoughts, John, before you jump up here in your fabulous Alexander McQueen jacket. Um, on the economy, one of the things I've learned is it's often darkest before dawn. At least we know what the problems are. Now we need the resolve to fix them. Across the board, sacrifice is, is needed. You've all worked at companies where the companies didn't recognize their problems. That's the worst situation. Once they say we have a problem, things can oftentimes get better. In the tech industry, we live in absolutely unprecedented times. We're all pretty lucky. And to quote Rudyard Kipling, if you can keep your head ab above, when you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs, and I'll leave it with that. It's good to be humble and, and appreciate how lucky we are and not think that your business is worth more than it really may be, or you'll get yourself in trouble. And with that, John, thank you. Mary. Have a seat. Thank you. Thank you. Is that okay? I actually think that was fewer slides than you've done in the past. I don't know. You were flipping them for me. I, I know. Was just, that was, that, was, we, that, was we that had about 75 the theories Jack going on as to okay. what the hell was actually happening. We thought maybe you were leaning on the second Q thing over there, or, okay. or, or maybe someone wrote a bug that, anyway. Sorry. It wasn't you. That's, no, it's fine. It's Sorry. fine. No I got, one understood I got what was going on, and I guess that's just the way it's going to stay. It's the, there's some ghosts in the, in the Yeah, closet, there are, God knows there are ghosts here. In, in, in this wonderful old palace hotel, like Warren G. Harding, who gave up his ghost here. We don't need to talk That's about that. That's interesting stuff. Yeah, well, it's, you know. So uh, why did you leave the wonderful world of Wall Street <laughs> to move here um, and, uh, and, and work for Kleiner? The commute would be shorter to the Web 2.0 conference. <laughs> Um, I worked at Morgan Stanley for 19 years. It was a great experience. It was a great organization. I always wanted to invest, um, but I liked what I was doing there. And I feel that if you, if you like where you work, you shouldn't leave until uh, it's better than it was when you got there. Yeah. And I thought, call it old school, but um, uh, the organization's in a pretty good place. The tech team is in a great spot. Um, I had got a kick out of the team wrote a research report on a company that we did, a, we, that we took public, and I called them up and I said, guys, you're the same team. Why is this report better now than it would have been if you were working with me when I was there? Mm -hmm. So that was a, uh, you know, I think that it was, it's a great time. I realized if I didn't leave then, I would never leave. Mm. And the Kleiner team is a great team. Yeah. It's a loose federation of company builders, and there are a lot of great companies and a lot of great entrepreneurs, and it's fun to help them. And you, you, you managed to get the timing pretty good on the whole Occupy Wall Street thing. Um, but you must have an opinion about it, uh, w given everything you just showed, yep. Yep. right, um, uh, about the U.S. economy and, and certainly the global economy. That last slide was global. Yep. What do you make of it? So I think people are angry, um, and everybody's angry. People deserve to be a little angry. I think that we've had a lot of finger pointing. Um, recently, or over the last couple of years, which I don't necessarily think is good. And I look at it in a holistic way. If we go back over the last 40 years, um, our government has been pretty loose with spending and was pretty loose in keeping interest rates at a low level. Um, and that, when, when people were looking for places to invest and they couldn't get high returns on secure savings and house prices were going up 20%, and they could get loans at relatively low rates. They got the loans. They bought the second home. Uh, credit was easy. Uh, the government set us up a situation where it was easy to borrow. Um, the economy was doing pretty well. Consumers got over their skis with borrowing. And Wall Street was given instruments to trade. And they traded them like crazy. And so I think when you take a step back, this is the way I look at it, if, if I was trying to point blame, I'd say a third government, a third consumer, a third financial services industry. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of, of finger pointing because we have a problem. And, and, and we don't have a cushion right now because our expenses as a country are higher 
than they ever have been relative to the the Is there, the, the, is the there no way out or? The, the way out is we all have to say, we have a problem, we all have to sacrifice. We have to give up a little here, we have to give a little there, and we need some really good focused leadership from um, from our Congress, from the White House, to really make those and changes. And, and the consumer has to say, I get that we all have a problem, and I too am going to sacrifice. Right. H how are you feeling on handicapping that happening? Um, it does. It hasn't looked good so far. But I would. I'm hopeful. I'm an optimist. Yeah, so I'm am Silicon I. Valley. I'm so an am optimist. I. So let's and, and I think I'll say one, one more thing. The consumer has tightened their belt. You have to. If you don't tighten your belt and you have a problem, you're kicked out of your house. I think businesses have tightened their belts. S and P earnings growth has been pretty good over the last three years. Well, that's because they're firing people. Well, they? but they're, they're, they have shareholders to report to, and so they're doing what they need to do to, to, to keep themselves in good stead, as, as consumers are too, with their bankers or right. whomever. And the government hasn't done that, yeah. and that's the next step, and I think there's a, we, we want to see that happen. But every, everybody's I, guilty. I'd love to, to, to debate policy, but we don't have time, and I want to get to what you're actually doing now. Okay. We have very, very little time. Um, so I've compressed is it, just, it. Is this Dan Schulman's water? Pardon me? No, I don't think that's Dan's water. I think that was Dan's water over there. Okay. I, I like a little Dan. Bit of I'll have Dan's in. water. <laughs> <laughs> you want to just get a little bit of that Schulman magic. Um, I've compressed, uh, because we don't have much time, I've compressed companies that you've invested in, or okay. that Kleiner, your fund, has invested in. And I want one word or two word responses to these. To, to I could I could do the Ben stuff. Happy, sad. Yeah. <laughs> so so let's start. Blue. Blue. <laughs> <laughs> I want to start with, uh, I, and I might toss in a couple of companies that you haven't invested in per okay. se, but you covered, and you obviously have very clear opinions about some very big already public companies. So okay. let's start with are we Waze. We're going to speed clock. Speed. speed. Waze. Waze. Um, Israel. Seven million users. Um, 10% of Tel Aviv commuters use Waze to when they're driving around Tel Aviv, and it's really helped them beat traffic. And the thing that interested us, I'm sorry I'm going on on this. That's 20 there words. 140, but I'm long-winded, but I can get through it. 140 million Americans spend 50 minutes a day in a car, and 75% of them are alone. That's, and this, one of the themes that we talked about was sound sound in the car, audio, I think it's a big, big untapped white big space. Big opportunity. White space, well put, yes. There's this company name there somewhere. Square. Um, can, I be, can I do more than one word? OK, you can do like four. So, <laughs> OK, you can do four 20, sentences. 20,000 percent year-on-year gross payment volume and transaction revenue growth. I saw that slide. That was pretty extraordinary. Spotify. How did you see a slide? I, saw, I, I was backstage messing with slide. you the whole okay. time. OK, OK. <laughs> it's changed the way I listen to music. I love it. 15 million users. Um, John Battelle's listening to Lady Gaga, Britney Spears, and <laughs> Taylor, I haven't shared and my Taylor Swift. <laughs> and Tim O'Reilly is listening to Truckin' by the Grateful Dead. <laughs> <laughs> And nobody was listening to nothing when you were throwing the Angry Birds out there, yeah. looking like Drew Brees. It was very impressive. Oh, yeah. We needed, I, I, so we needed some music. I missed my, obviously, my Cal Bears could use a quarterback. Um, this one might be, I don't know, Groupon. Quiet period. Oh. <laughs> I would love to talk about Groupon, but I can't. Pass. That's what you're going to put right there. Uh, Twitter. Um, I know Dick was here last night. Yep. I didn't catch everything that he said, but they have 2,000 advertisers up from about less than 100 a year ago. Yep. So they're finally starting to monetize the platform, which is pretty exciting. I think their mobile user growth was 40% sequentially, and their tweets are up 150,000, 150, not 150,000, 150% year on yep. year. So they're, they're, they're starting to hit it. One King's Lane. I spend five minutes a day on the site every morning five days a week, and they just had their first million dollar day in the last month. Right That's on. a big number, yeah. Yeah. and I didn't buy it all. That means they're on a $360 million run rate. Um, no, that's not fair, but I they know. had a good day. They had a good day. Uh, Trendyall, I was unfamiliar with that. A Turkish fashion site, 
um, they have four, they have four million users founded two years ago, and Turkey is the uh, textile capital of the world, and they really like fashion. And the demo skews very young. They're very one of the top Facebook countries in the world, and they have a kicking entrepreneurial team. Great team. La last two, I'm going to cut these down because we're already out of time. 360 buy. A Chinese company. Um, the se second and third tier cities outside of Beijing, Shanghai, and Guangzhou are underserved. Great entrepreneur. A little bit of Walmart. A little bit of Amazon.com. E-commerce mm. is growing 40% a year, and they're doing really well. Okay. How am I doing? Okay. Zynga. Quiet period. Damn it. <laughs> Mark Pinkus should have said everything yesterday. Yeah, he yeah. sure as hell did. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't show up. Um, I know, quiet period. All right. You so know, you just, uh, 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 one of the things that when a year ago, I think we showed a slide or, uh, recently that went, that wasn't a year ago, but Cityville uh, ramped far faster than yeah. Farmville did. Yeah. Uh, and one of the questions people have about businesses like that is, is there a secret sauce? Can they make the next game? Do they, do they know how to make the next game as good as the last game? And they proved some of that with that game, I thought, with the ramp. Let me just ask you one last. period. OK. <laughs> Google. Um, I think the new, manage, the new structure of the management team is great. There are no weak links. I think it's very impressive. Well, let, let me be the first to thank you for coming back for the eighth thank straight you. year. Please join me thank in you. thanking Mary. Thank you. Thank you. I will take care of it. Okay. <laughs> Bye.